Okay, so we're going to learn about atoms in the periodic table. To learn about atoms, we know a little bit about elements already and atoms from our matter unit. So elements, there are 118 of them on the periodic table, um, and they make up all the matter in our world. Um, each element has its own name and a one or two letter abbreviation called a symbol. Um, an element is made up of all one type of atom. So for example, oxygen is made up of oxygen atoms, helium is made up of helium, at helium atoms, so on and so forth. Um, the symbols, as you can see, oxygen has a single letter symbol, and that is an O, and helium has a double letter symbol. You'll notice that the H is capital and the E is lowercase, so that's going to be really important. Um, you can see there's a few more down here as well. Potassium is AK, notice the capital. Sodium is NA, capital N, lowercase a. That's really important for distinguishing um, different elements. You know that it's a different element when you see a capital letter. Um, when we get into learning about bonding and chemical reactions, it's going to be very important that we write our um, formulas and our symbols correctly. So first letter is always capital. If it has a second letter, it's always lowercase. Um, also notice that some of the symbols aren't kind of what you would expect them to be. Oxygen is O. Helium is HE. Hydrogen is H. But if we look at these ones here, potassium starts with a K. Sodium is NA. And that's because that goes back to their Latin roots their Latin name. So some symbols do not match um, the name. And you guys will need to know the first 20 elements. You need to know their names and symbols. You don't need to know them in any kind of order, but you need to be able to um, if I give you the name, you should be able to give me the symbol. If I give you a symbol, you should be able to give me the element name. Okay. Um, there is a Kahoot and there's a couple of Quizlets um, in the extra resources page at the top of the unit. Um, and that uh, you can use those to study for your first 20 elements quiz, um, which will be coming up. I will uh, let you know the date in class. Atoms. So atoms are the smallest part of an element. Um, they have two main areas. So the first main area is the nucleus. This is the small, dense, central part of the atom. So it's in the middle. It's very small. It's very dense. Dense meaning it has mass. It has a lot of mass in a small amount of space. And the nucleus has a positive charge. We'll kind of discuss why the nucleus is positive here on the next slide. Um, but the electron cloud is the second part of the atom. Um, sometimes it's called energy levels. Um, you'll kind of see why as we start learning about them. But electron cloud and energy levels, we're talking about the same thing. Um, this surrounds the nucleus um, and has a negative charge. So the nucleus would be... There's some stuff in the nucleus that we're going to go over on the next slide. Um, that would be the nucleus. And then the um, electron cloud would kind of be around there. The electron cloud. Okay? So the green dots would be the nucleus, and then the pink around the outside would be the electron cloud. The atom has an overall neutral charge or charge of zero, um, and that's because the positive nucleus cancels out the negative electron cloud. So the atom can be broken out into three subatomic particles. Subatomic just means smaller than the atom, below the atom. So subatomic particles are protons, neutrons, and electrons. So the proton is positive. It's in the middle in the nucleus. So if you look here, this is the proton, okay, and you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six of them in the middle. Um, they have a mass of one, and they have a positive charge. Protons are positive, and they're located in the nucleus or the central part of the atom. 
um, electrons are green. Electrons are negative, and if we look at them here in our picture, okay, we can count them, there are six electrons. So electrons are negative, um, and they are so small. Electrons, this, this picture is not to scale. Electrons are so small that we say that their mass is zero. It's not truly zero, but if you compare the size of an electron to a proton, it's so small that it's, it's barely relevant. Um, so we say that the mass is zero. And they're located outside the nucleus. So that's in that electron cloud. Electrons are in the electron cloud. And neutrons are in the white color. Neutrons are here, and there's one, two, three, four, five. There's also six of them. The neutrons are neutral, which means that they have a charge of zero, and their mass is one. So notice that the proton has a mass of one, and the neutrons have a mass of one. Um, and they're also in the nucleus. So we said that the nucleus is small, it's very dense, it has a lot of mass in a small space. So if you look at the two things that have mass, that's the proton and the neutron, and those are both in the nucleus. And we also said that the nucleus has a positive overall charge. Um, you can see that the neutrons don't have a charge listed on them in the picture, um, because again, they're neutral, they don't have a charge. So the only thing in the nucleus that has a charge are the protons, and they're positive. So that's why the nucleus has a positive charge. The electron cloud contains the electrons, which don't have a mass. So there's no mass in the electron cloud, um, but they do have a charge. Their charge is negative. So the electrons in the electron cloud give it a negative charge. So protons, we use a little p symbol and um, we're gonna use a little positive next to that because protons are positive. Electrons in E with a little negative sign and neutrons in with a little zero. So let's look at our picture real quick. So we had six electrons and six protons. So that means we've got six positives and six negatives. Well, if you add six positives and six negatives together, you get zero. So that's why the atom overall, if you put the whole thing together, the atom overall is neutral. Okay, that's because when you combine the electrons and the protons, they don't have, um, they cancel each other out. So when you're looking at the periodic table, you will see something like this box for each uh, element. Um, you'll see a couple of numbers, a name, and maybe a symbol, um, depending on what source you have. So a couple of things here. The smaller number in the box is the atomic number. It's always the smaller number in the box, and it is defined as the number of protons. So chlorine here is the element that we're looking at. Chlorine has 17 protons. And this is always, this is always the case. Number of protons is the atomic number. That's the definition. Um, it also happens to be that um, chlorine has 17 electrons. So the atomic number um, will just also happen to tell us the number of electrons for now. And that has a little star next to it because that will change in the future. Um, but for now, we're going to assume that all atoms are neutral. And that means that the protons equal the electrons. The positive equals the negative, And they cancel out. So that's why the atom is neutral. The mass number is this number here. Um, and that is when you combine the two particles that have mass, the protons and the neutrons. So these are only the, the particles that are in the nucleus. The protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus um, has all of the mass. It's small and dense um, and positively charged. If chlorine has a mass number of 35, and we know that it has 17 protons. Can you work backwards to figure out how many neutrons it has? And you can. You just need, need to subtract 35 minus 17. And that would tell you that it has 18 neutrons. So remember, the smaller number is always the atomic number. It's the number of protons. The mass number has to be the biggest because it includes protons and neutrons. 
So the mass number is the bigger of the two. And a lot of periodic tables that you see will have, this will be the mass number. It's actually an atomic mass and it'll be a number that has a decimal. We'll kind of talk about that later. Um, but for right now, we're gonna treat our masses as whole numbers. So our first two here, um, NE and CL. So NE is neon. The atomic number, it's always gonna be the smaller number in the box, so that's gonna be 10, all right? The mass, really this should say mass number. Atomic mass is something different. The mass number is the larger number, so that's gonna be 20. Protons, um, remember the protons are the atomic number. So the atomic number was 10, so the number of protons is 10. Neutrons, to find the neutrons, you've gotta do the mass number minus the number of protons. So then we're gonna do 20 minus 10, and that just also happens to be 10. A lot of times you will end up having the neutrons and the protons be the same, but not every time. You've gotta work through the math to make sure. And the electrons, remember for now, those are gonna be also the same as the atomic number in the protons, so those are also 10. Okay, so Cl is chlorine. The atomic number, that's always the smaller number, so that's gonna be 17. The mass number um, is the other number, so 35. Protons, um, that's the same as the atomic number always, so that will be 17. Neutrons, mass number, minus protons, so it's gonna be 35 minus 17. So that's how we got 18 the first time. 18 proton or 18 neutrons, excuse me. And electrons for now is going to be the same as the atomic number and the protons, so 17. Um, the shorthand um, that you'll see a lot is uh, you see the symbol of the element, and then you've got two numbers to the left of it on top of each other. So the symbol is obviously the element symbol. The top number is always the mass number. So three here is the mass number and the atomic number is the bottom number. So the top number is the protons plus the neutrons, which is the mass, and then the bottom number is the atomic number. So the top number is always um, the larger number. Um, looking at these three symbols, we can notice something is that they are all C. They are all the same symbol. So that means that these are all carbon. So I'm gonna do a little star up there. So these would be all atoms of carbon. So let's notice what's the same about them. Obviously they have the same symbol. And then also this number is the same. So the atomic number is the identifier. The number of protons tells you what element it is. So six is always carbon. So elements or atoms of carbon will always have six protons. If we scroll back up and look up here, hydrogen always has one proton. If it has more than one proton, it's not hydrogen. Um, chlorine always has 17 protons. If it's got 18 protons, it's not chlorine. If it's got 16 protons, it's not chlorine. Um, and then neon always has 10 protons. So the number of protons uh, gives the element its identity. The atomic number is the identity of the atom. Okay, so because these are all carbon, they all have six protons. So we can go ahead and fill in um, protons should all be six because they're all carbon. And if you look up carbon on the periodic table, um, you will see that its atomic number is six. And I'm gonna go to my periodic table app just to show you. If I click on carbon, you can see that the atomic number, the little number in the dark purple circle or dark purple square is a six. And then the mass, um, this is the atomic mass when I was talking about earlier, um, how sometimes it's a decimal. So that's a little bit different from mass number, but you can see that it's close to 12. If you look at different elements, you can see, like for example, if I go to chlorine, 17, and the mass is 35. Neon, 10, and the mass is 20. Okay, so looking at the periodic table, you can always see if you click on something, the smaller number is always the atomic number, and that gives the atom its identity. Um, if we look at this mass number here, you can see the mass is 12. Remember that the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons, and the protons are six. So six plus what gives us 12? 
Well, six plus six gives us 12. So the neutrons are six. And remember that the electrons, again, are the same as the protons for now. For this one, the mass number is 13. Um, the other way to think about finding the number of neutrons is doing the mass number minus the number of protons. So we can do 13 minus six. So 13 minus six is seven. So this one has seven neutrons. Um, electrons, again, same as the protons for now. And here we have 14 for the mass number. So our mass number increased by one every time. So that means my neutrons are gonna increase by one. So if you do 14 minus six, that gives you eight neutrons. And again, the electrons are going to be six. So let's look at something here. So these are all atoms of carbon. They all have six protons and six electrons. Um, but what's different about them is that they have different mass numbers, and that means that they have different numbers of neutrons. So this one has six neutrons, this one had seven neutrons, and this one had eight neutrons. There is a special name for these kinds of atoms, where they're atoms that have the same name, they're atoms of the same element, but they have different masses, and these are what we call isotopes. And we'll revisit that term later, but it's nice to introduce it just because this is a really great example of it. So isotopes are atoms of the same element, but they've got different masses. And that means that they have different numbers of neutrons. So the protons are gonna be the same, the electrons are gonna be the same, the element name is gonna be the same, but the mass and the neutrons are different. So let's look at this practice here. This is very similar to what your assignment is going to be. So let's look at this example. So our first one to do is neon. We need to look up the atomic number, but look at the table. They gave us the protons and the neutrons, but we need to fill in the atomic number, the mass number, and the electrons. Well, we can go ahead and fill in the electrons because it's gonna be the same as the protons for now. So the protons and the electrons are the same. Um, and then we can fill in the atomic number because the atomic number is the protons as well. So if the protons are 10, we know the atomic number is 10. The mass number we can figure out, that's the protons plus the neutrons. So if the protons are 10 and the neutrons are 10, 10 plus 10, is 20. Hydrogen, um, the information they gave us was the atomic number and the mass number. So we're missing protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons, the atomic number, and the electrons should always be the same for now. So if the atomic number is one, then the protons are one and the electrons are one. Okay, so those three columns should always match. So this, those three should match. The neutrons, um, if we don't know those, and we don't in this case, you just wanna do the mass number minus the protons. So the mass is one and the protons are one. One minus one is zero. So hydrogen with a mass of one doesn't have any neutrons. And that's okay, that happens sometimes. You don't have to have neutrons to be an atom. You just have to have protons to be an atom. Remember, the protons are what give the atom its identity. Neutrons are just kind of like an added bonus. So the next one, they didn't give us the name, um, but we know the mass number and we know the protons. Well, if we know the protons, then remember, we know the atomic number and we know the electrons. Um, if we know the atomic number, we can look it up using a periodic table. So again, I'm gonna go back to my periodic table and I'm gonna look for number six. Atomic number six. So there it is, atomic number six. That's carbon. We just did that one on the previous slide. So there's carbon. I'm gonna put in the name here. And this symbol for carbon is just a C. So make sure it's a capital C. And the only thing we're missing now is the neutrons. Remember, we were going to do the mass minus the proton. So 12 minus six is six. Beryllium or BE. We know the mass number and we know the electrons. So remember, your electrons should be the same as your protons and your atomic number. So we can go ahead and fill in those. So the protons are gonna be also four and the atomic number is also four. And then to find the neutrons, again, you just subtract. Nine minus four is gonna give you five. 
Let's look at this example here with the shorthand. So you can see it's the symbol and then you have the big number over the smaller number. So remember this is the mass number. It's the bigger number because it has to include the protons and the neutrons. And the, lar the smaller number, sorry, is the atomic. And this is always the same as the number of protons. And then it also happens to be the number of electrons for now. Um, so you can look up the element K on the periodic table. So let's go find K. So if we look for K, K is potassium. So that's one you're going to have to know that K is potassium. Um, but don't get it mixed up with phosphorus because phosphorus has the symbol P. But potassium is K. Potassium. The atomic number is the smaller number, so 19. It's always the number on the bottom. The mass number is the bigger number on top, 39. Um, protons, remember that's always the same as the atomic number, so that's going to be 19. We can go ahead and fill in 19 for the electrons as well. The neutrons, we've got to do some math. We're going to do the mass minus protons. So 39 minus 19 is 20. 20 neutrons. So you're going to be doing something very similar to this slide on the homework. Concept checked. So check, excuse me. What two particles are located in the nucleus and make up the mass of an atom? So in the nucleus, what two things are in the nucleus and combine to make the mass of an atom? Those are going to be the protons and the neutrons. Which particle has a negative charge? That's going to be the electron. The electron is negative. What particle is most responsible for the atomic number, the identity of an element? And that is going to be your protons. Your protons are responsible for the identity of the element. Where is the nucleus located? That's going to be in the center of the atom. What does the top number of nuclear notation represent? Nuclear notation is another way to say the chemist shorthand. It may also be referred to as um, isotope notation. I think most often I will refer to it as the chemist shorthand. So I would say that's probably the most important. That's what I would call it. So the top number in the chemist shorthand is always the bigger number. The bigger number goes on top, and that is the mass number. If an element symbol has two letters, what is important to note about the second letter? The second letter's always got to be lowercase. You have to be careful. Um, for example, elements like copper or um, cobalt, for example. Okay, if the second letter is not small, if you were to write out copper, copper, if you wrote like this, or sorry, like a C and a big U. Those are two different elements now. So this is now carbon and this is uranium. So this no longer means the same thing. And for cobalt, for example, C with a little O, um, notice I over exaggerated. I made the O really, really small because you have to be careful because this substance, if you don't draw the O small, this is carbon and oxygen now, otherwise known as carbon monoxide. So this was cobalt, and this is carbon monoxide. Okay, so you just got to be careful and be really intentional when you have a two-letter symbol that you um, distinguish between your upper and your lower case.